Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Spear Spartan Football Preview Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in for another fun show. We've got yet another new guest here on the Spear Spartan Football Preview Show. You're still stuck with Derek and I. You know the drill. But this week we've got, and I'm going to butcher this, and I do apologize to her, Niku Parasidea. I, 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 I got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, I got it. Good enough. But look, Derek, you're back. We're back. Look, the Spartans last week, Derek, you and I took a fatal loss in the predictions. Uh, the Spartans did not look good last week in a 32 to 14 loss to Colorado State. Look, Derek, I'm going to bring you in real quick here today. What went wrong for the Spartans? Obviously, there was still no Nick Starkle. Uh, Derek, I know you got a little homage to the late Ray Fossey, who we found out today here on Wednesday the 13th. Excuse me. Um, but but Derek, you know, after your little homage to, to Ray Fossey here, give me what you got on, on what went wrong for the Spartans this weekend. Well, yeah, um, obviously, before we start taping, uh, one of my broadcasting heroes, Ray Fossey, passed away, 16-year battle with cancer, um, played in the big leagues for 12 to 15 seasons, two World Series rings with, of course, well, let me move my head, the real Bay, Bay Area baseball team, not the Giants, it's the A's. Um, so, yeah, I grew up listening to him. He was the uh, soundtrack to my summer um, with Glenn Kuyper and Ken Korak, Bill King, the late great Bill King and Vince Catronio. So obviously it's kind of sad just because, you know, you get older and you realize just how much of a impact, um, you know, your heroes have on you and stuff like that. So uh, my thoughts are with this family, his wife, who he was with, with for 51 years, that is just an amazing marriage. Um, and obviously all of us, you know, the A's fans were loyal to a T were diehard to a T. Um, so anytime, you know, you lose a legend like Ray Fossey, it, it kind of, her, you know, hits home just because you, you grow up 162 games. And I'm one of the only baseball fans, 23 year olds that literally sits down at the game or sits down on the couch and watches three to four hours of the game. Um, and it's for um, broadcasters like Ray Fossey. Um, so we're thinking of you, Ray. We're thinking of you, um, his family. Of course, the A's, um, I know the A's family were loyal and, um, you know, we'll try to, I know hopefully they re can retire his number next year. Um, number 10. And uh, I know people are going to ask me about um, this right here. Is it real? Is he going to talk? Is he automated like Disney? No, he's not. Um, that is a cardboard cutout of Clint Eastwood. You'd like the media pass right there. Um, but, you know, to the football game, um, I mean, gosh, Colorado State put a whooping on us um, and give credit to them. They played their, you know, they played lights out um, offensively, defensively. Um, our, I don't know if our team's bought into their own hype. You know what I mean? It's just like we're, you know, they were just going through the motions. They were flat. And I wouldn't say it was uh, deflating. I would say more embarrassing. And it has been a good week for our school, PR-wise, you know, with our uh, president resigning. Um, there's still that, you know, the athletic trainer scandal, which the Spartan Daily and us have done a good job on covering. Um, and there's still meant two different lawsuits with that scandal. Um, and then your football team goes out and plays like that, really just not doing, not just, I wouldn't say caring because they do care, but just not showing any effort to, you know, be in these games. And they had a seven nothing lead and then they just got ran, rammed over, no pun intended. Um, so, you know, obviously we got homecoming, 24th ranked San Diego State, who looks like a world beater coming to Sefku Stadium on Friday night. They are uh, honoring James Jones into, you know, putting his name on the uh, Spartan wall of fame or wall of honor um but yeah you know i want to see this team just have that passion again because uh this is a must-win game for them and if they don't win this then you can take down the mount west champion posters because you're going to be in a one and two hole conference wise when you got san diego state boys or san diego state fresno and nevada in your division yeah good luck to that but Derek, you brought some good points. Obviously, you know, prayers up to Ray Fossey. I know he was one of your favorites, one of your legends, the guys you looked up to. And, and obviously people who have, who have seen us and watched us on this podcast or, or on my show that used to be not that it matters, know that, that he was a big part of your life. Uh, but look, I got to bring in our, our newest uh, member here at the Spear. She's done a first, it's her first semester here at the Spear. She's done a great job covering stories. Uh, she was a little nervous getting into this, but we're happy to have her. Look, Niku, uh, I don't know how much you know of last season, but last year, San Diego State, came in, uh, uh, or sorry, the Spartans went down to San Diego State, took on San Diego State, who was having a good year. Nick Starkle had left the game early, forcing Nick Nash, who has played the last two games this year for us, into an amazing comeback and really was a key marking season that kind of showed that this team was legit. Look, Derek said it best last just now. This team did not play with any passion. They just, they looked like they just they didn't really care out there. Now, we're not saying they don't care. But Niku, going into last week, you know, 
What did you see? What 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 are you hoping the Spartans do in terms of adjusting adjustments coming into this big game against San Diego State? And welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my heart goes off to um, Posse family. Um, rest in peace. Um, and moving on to your question, yes, I do think that Spartans really need to work on their defense, as um, because the other game it seems like. Like you said, they were kind of letting go. They didn't, um, like, we're not saying they didn't care, but it was lacking kind of the teamwork that they needed. And I'm really hoping to see that kind of defense and the leadership um, being taken care of in this new game. Um, I know that San Diego is really also good with the defense. They're really good with pushing in the game. So is, um, so was Spartans at the last game of, um, with the Colorado States. Um, they did a really good job pushing in the game where they ended 32. And I think if they do work together, I think they can also push in and make some touchdowns. Like Nico brings up some good points. And I think that's something that has been a really good theme throughout the season that I think you and I've touched on Derek, and that's playing as a unit, playing as a team. You know, we've talked about wanting to get the pass rush, the defensive line really getting going, which would help the secondary, which has struggled a little bit this year, obviously with some pieces gone, the defensive lines remain intact. Uh, obviously Derek, you and I have mentioned, you know, Kate Hall, uh, uh, junior Faye Helco have not really been tremendous. Kyle Harmon in there too, as well. Uh, they haven't been too great. They've gotten to the quarterback a little bit here and there, but Nico brings that good point of not only San Diego State is, is very good at defense. I mean, as a whole, this 24th ranked team in the nation is allowing just 16.6 points per game. They're allowing just over two touchdowns per game. That's insane. I mean, they're only allowing 270 yards a game. They stuff the run. They're allowing just 50 yards per game on the run. Look, the Spartans offense has really come from Tyler Nevins and the run game this year. Look, going to San Diego State, obviously they're home. It's homecoming. And I think uh, it said it best uh, at the Spear today at our class. We we had our our brand new athletic director uh, Jeff Konya, uh, and and he gave us a prediction, which which ladies and gentlemen we will share on here. But but Jeff Kona said you know he, he's excited for homecoming. Uh, he he thinks you know this is obviously all the fans, alumni, friends, family is going to come. It's going to be a packed house. He's going to bring the energy, which is something that both of you have touched on. Derek, what are you looking for for the Spartans to do this game? on homecoming on a Friday night. So they're going to get the Friday night lights. They're going to be on CBS. Derek, what are the keys for the Spartans to beat this very good defensive team in San Diego State? Whoa, 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 whoa. CBS Sports Network, because they got my show Magnum PI on at nine. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm going to be uh, helping out with KSGS in the studio on uh, Friday night. So shout out to Magnum PI, one of my favorite shows when I'm doing homework. Wink, wink. Um, you know, I think with the defense, um, I wouldn't say they've they've played bad. They've been really, you know, solid. It's just they're not as, you know, gangsta. And what I mean by that is they haven't really forced a lot of turnovers. Um, they've allowed 23 points a game compared to last year with 19. Um, but, you know, they've kind of been one of the main reasons why this, you know, SJSU's 500, you know. Um, Kate Hall, he's been sl slowly coming out of hibernation. I think a lot of these teams have been double teaming them. Um, Villa Mali Fajoko and then Trey Jenkins. You know, both all three of these guys are leaders and then they haven't been really able to force turnovers. Um, you know, they had eight fumble recoveries last year. They've only had two fumbles and one interception to go with that. And uh, they're asking a lot. Obviously, San Diego State, very talented, 5-0, and B2, Pac-12 teams in Arizona and Utah. Um, you know, Greg Ball is one of the best running backs in the conference. Um, you know, he can, you know, get 20 carries at least and they're averaging 244 yards per game on the ground, which is like top 15. Um, so this team, you know, the Aztecs know what they're doing. Of course, the Spartans went into Carson last year and Nick Nash came in to save the day and, you know, was one of the reasons why, um, you know, they won the Mountain West uh, Conference last year. But I think defensively, you know, it's going to be tough to stop Greg Bell. Of course, the QB, Jordan Brookshire can also run as well. Um, you know, that defense is loaded. You know, San Diego State's defense is loaded. They know, you know, they only limited New Mexico to about like, what, 100, you know, 33 something yards, uh, 198, uh, 193 total yards, sorry. Um, it was in the 90s somewhere, so I knew that. Um, but yeah, their defense is real solid too. Caden McDonald, Garrett Fountain, uh, Cameron Thomas, you know, they have a great pass rush, um, bringing a lot of blitzes at you. So um, it should be interesting. Um, I know it's going to be, I think it will be a very close game. I'm, you know, I'm leaning towards two ways out of the Aztecs come in. Uh, realize that, you know, they got their hearts broken last year in Carson, California, and they want to take this one, go to 6-0, and move up in the AP poll, 
or you know they might linger and let San Jose State have fun with it a little bit. Um, but either way, you know I think the Spartans are going to have a tall task at it because you go from Colorado State and their physicality to now going to San Diego State on a short week, um, and you got another short week next week in UNLV. But yeah, I think it's going to be a very tough task for the Spartans to just get mentally prepared for it. Um, just because this is a big game, this is like a matchup of the heavyweights, like uh, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder three, um, and hopefully the Spartans don't get knocked out of the contention to defend the title. Definitely, Derek. I think you said it best. I mean, look, and I, when I look up the schedule here coming up for for San Jose State, they they, they don't have back to back home games until they play Utah State and Fresno in mid-November. Look, this team has been on the road for a lot. They've been, you know, they played at home against Southern Utah, then on the road for three, then back home for one, and then back on the road. This team has traveled a lot. I think it's very good to have this game at home, especially with how good the Aztecs are this season. Look, the Spartans this year, uh, you know, they've they've shown flashes of being good. Um, but look, you know, I think, Double, I think San Jose, or sorry, San Diego State has has double the motivation this season than they did last year. Obviously, last year you've mentioned it, I've mentioned it about the, the comeback, the Nick Nash comeback. So that's already put motivation in the San Diego State team locker room. That's how much they want to win. We don't want to let them happen. And then throw throw you know, you know, more smoke on the fire, whatever it is, you know, burn the fire hard, make it harder on yourself. San Jose State, we've mentioned this before the whole year. They are the reigning champs. They've already got a target on their back. Everybody wants to beat them. Everyone wants to be on top. Right now, they are still on top. So that's double motivation for San Diego State. Now, Nico, let me talk to you. What what do you want to see from the Spartan offense? You know, you mentioned that that San Diego State is a very tough defense. Obviously, Tyler Nevins is starting running back for the Spartans. He's had a very strong season. Um, What do you want to see from the Spartans offense? Uh, If Starko plays, obviously, they'll be able to open up the playbook, throwing the ball more. But what are you? What are your keys for the Spartan offense to unlocking and staying in this game? Um, I think holding on to the football is the key thing here um, because they did a really good job in the New Mexico game where they did thirty-seven to thirty-one, and I think the most um, outcome of that was because of the passing. We know that they're doing the pushing and the yards per play, but I really do think that it's the passing that gets them. Um, the most touchdown and they really knew, do need those touchdowns with San Diego because San Diego is unbeatable kind of when it comes to um, their defense with touchdowns. So I do want to see them going f- more aggressively for the touchdowns. Right. I think that's something we can easily see with Nick Starkle if he's back in the lineup. Obviously, Tyler Nevins has had a great season, but unlocking that pass game, I think will do a great job of, of moving this offense to the next level. Now, look, one thing that both of you have mentioned, and that is that is holding on to the football, the turnover margin. I'm going to throw it back to our athletic director, Jeff Konya. Uh, he said our, our right now our turnover margin is negative 10, meaning we've given the ball up 10 more times than we've taken it away. I think that's something that we haven't seen much from the Spartan defense this year. And I think we've only seen maybe two forced fumbles, only one recovered. And I think we only have two, something like only two interceptions. So I think both of you bring good points of, of, not only just holding on to the ball, but still being aggressive on offense, but creating those turnovers defensively. Derek, give me your your quick keys to the game here before we move to our predictions. Quick keys to the game. Number one, get the crowd into it, folks. I mean, I know I know Spartan Nation, I guess we changed. I thought it was one Spartan Nation, but we changed it to Spartan Nation. Um, get them into it. You know what I mean? This is a Friday night game. This is a pivotal matchup for both teams. San Diego State has bigger aspirations like making New Year's Six Bowl. Um, San Jose State, you just gotta get your mojo back. You're kind of, you're kind of losing both hands on the trophy, if you will. So get get your swagger back. Um, number two, avoid the highway into the danger zone. Nick probably wants to drop the class and say Saints of Kenny Loggins here. Um, you know, avoid the danger zone. Don't turn the ball over. I mean, you, you know, I think whoever starts, whether it's Stark or Nash, you know, make the uh, check down passes. Don't keep going don't you don't have to go for the hero pass all the time if it's not there just take the check down pass you want to keep you know that high powered aztec offense on the sideline uh looking at the construction site as much as possible on the east on the east end zone um and i think number three for the defense is just try to limit greg ball keep him inside the middle keep him into the trenches because if you get him on the outside um you know things are going to look really really uh, bad it's going to be a long night for that spartan linebacking core um, so yeah, those are my three keys to the game and, uh, KSJS, by the way, back on the call, uh, Lewis Geis and our own Johnny Schaefer, 
who's been a busy man calling hockey, you know, at UC of LA. And now he's doing football and then we have, and hockey did get re, hockey will be playing this weekend. They had a little schedule snafu. So they welcomed the, our lovely neighbors to the North here, uh, Stanford university. Um, so, you know, Johnny's going to be busy, man, but the game KSJS FM, of course you can watch it on CBS sports network. What nature now that comes the big shining moment of your time here on the Spear Spartan football preview show. Now this has been a staple for now two years on the show and that's getting predictions right. And it is now back to the norm of Derek losing these predictions. Look, I have only won one this year, but I've won more than him in total still. He's won two this year. I won three in total, two last year and one so far this year. Nico, look, before I get to you and your prediction, I, I, I'm going to talk about our athletic director one more time. We, you know, he was great. I do want to say, you know, send my appreciations. He, he was a fun class to be a part of, uh, you know, we, he's a brand new athletic director here at San Jose state. Um, and, and very rarely do you get that sort of open and candid conversation with that someone that high up in athletics of any NCAA school. So I just want to send my appreciation. I know the class and all the editors are very you know appreciative of what he did for us today and just allowing us to ask questions. So, but he did say, somebody did ask him, I believe Lamar, we all know Lamar. I did ask him say, who was going to win the football game? And look, ladies and gentlemen, he, you know, he said he can't root against the Spartans and he's not going to, and he believes that they will win. He thinks they're going to take a 23 to 21 win over the San Jose state or sorry, over the San Diego state Aztecs. Look, he said the biggest thing is getting the energy up for the team. He said energy within the crowd and energy with the team, which has been a focus of our podcast today. But look, now comes the big shining moment for Niku. Can she take a victory here on our prediction game? Niku, why do you think whoever's going to win and by what score do you have your winner? I really think this is a home game. The energy of the crowd is in the team already. And I really think that San Jose is going to be at least by 27 and San Diego 23. So that's, I'm going to go for that prediction and I'm rooting for Spartans because I just saw how great their steps are being taken and they're like going up. So Nico sees the team as trending upwards. I think the big key that we've seen is, is the energy of the crowd. Obviously it's homecoming. There's, it's going to be a packed house, 16,000 people. Obviously the other side of the stadium is not built yet, but it could be even louder in just a few years time. Derek, look, we're on a cold streak. And ladies and gentlemen, I have to talk about this really quickly because I forgot to mention it. Last week's winners is the other new person that we've had on the podcast so far this year. And that's none other than Jonathan Guzman. Look, and I'm not going to say he won in ceremonious fashion. He pulled a Derek Allen one by default. He was the only person to pick Colorado state. We give him credit. We give him credit. He said there's going to be 30 to 24 Colorado state. I think he would have won off score as well, but he did get the winner. Right. So Jonathan Guzman, congratulations. against gets first one of the year, but Derek, look, give me, give me why you think whoever's going to win and why, and what's, what score. Um, I think the Aztecs will have a peaceful, easy feeling. I'm getting ready to see the Eagles next Friday night, so that's what I'm saying. Um, you know, I think, like I said, this could go two ways. Either San Jose State stays in the game by just playing smart football, not committing penalties, offsides, or little um, neutral zone infractions or pass interferences, um, and really staying competitive in this game. And I can go with um, our athletic director and shout out to uh, Jeff Coney, our new athletic director for coming in class. We all know how busy that man is, you know, every day trying to just rebuild the culture here at San Jose State. So thank you, Jeff, for showing it to our class. Um, so I kind of see it going that way with Jeff, you know, making this game interesting for all four quarters. Um, but I think San Diego State will turn off the lights, go down in the city. Shout out to Journey. Um, I think San Diego State's going to have their way. Um, you know, I'm not saying the Spartans will be competitive, but I think the Aztecs are just on a mission to prove that they um, are still one of the alpha males of this conference. So I got the Aztecs up big, 36 17. Um, I think the Spartans just kind of need not a reality check, but, you know, I think this team is just kind of, you know, I think they're kind of a little bit believing in their own hype. I hope I've proven wrong, but I mean, they got to go out there and play football. I mean, you got that big target on your back of being the defending champions at Sandy in San Diego state were one of the teams that they they're thrown. So um, I think uh, the Aztecs will have some payback for them. Look, ladies and gentlemen, Derek, you and I seem to be the only people who really believe that the Spartans could get this win and really jumpstart their season. But you and I both do agree that we don't feel that they can win this game. Well, they can. Sorry, I take them back. They can win this game. Do I think they will? No, ladies and gentlemen, the over under for this game is just 41. I do believe that the over hits. Uh, I, I, I have I have unfortunately the Spartans losing this game to the Aztecs by a score of 28 
to 17. Now, Derek, if, if the Aztecs do win, it's going to be a close call. You and I both have the Spartans finishing with just 17 points. So whoever gets closer, we could have our first ever tie here, ladies and gentlemen. Could be rare. But look, Niku and Jeff, uh, they, they've got the Spartans as winners. Derek, let me toss it back to you. I know you want to hype the game. Where can our viewers and our listeners uh, find the game this Friday, ladies and gentlemen? The game is on Friday, not Saturday. And folks, I know um, there's some people on planet all in this region that are freaking out about this uh, baseball rivalry, I guess, in the NLDS, Max, you know anything about it? Giants, Dodgers, winner take, well, not winner take all, but game five, they move on, whoever wins um, Thursday night. So, um, or by the time this comes out, we already know who won. So, oh my God, spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, the game is on at 7.30, CBS Sports Network, not CBS, because Magna PI is on and you got 48 hours before that, um, but CBS Sports Network. Of course, you can listen to Justin Legree, the legend um, on the Spartan Radio Network. But if you want to get real fun and groovy and also, you know, you might get to listen to me because I will be doing the halftime report. Um, we got Spartan Football on 90.5 KSJS, Lewis Geist and our own Johnny Schaefer um, will be doing the broadcast and uh, I'll be in the studio doing the producing. So um, you'll be hearing my voice probably been, you know, during halftime when, you um, you know, they're going to crown. I think we have homecoming queen or king here. No, I, I did not know that. So I know, I know when you guys are watching that coronation, you have your headphones, you little, you know, those over those overpriced, um, you know, AirPods listening to my voice, the soothness of Derek Gow. But yeah, 730. And uh, this is a pivotal game. Like I mentioned, um, this could dictate if the Spartans want to uh, contend for their second straight Mountain West championship or they're just simply um, going for a bowl game, which, you know, hey, I'd rather go for the bowl game and also the conference championship. But if the conference championship's not there, go to a bowl game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another installment of the Spears Spartan Football Preview Show. We've been trucking along, Derek. It's been a fun year. I wonder who we're going to have on next week. But I got to thank Niku for taking the time out of her evening. Uh, and I just want to say she did great. You know, I really appreciate her coming on. Obviously, we wanted some new people trying to spread it out. We know you're getting boring. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we are diverse here. We also wanted to get the, you know, it's not just an all male class. We've got females. We've got great reporters here at the Spear. Ladies and gentlemen, this again, this has been the Spear Spartan Football Preview Show. The game is on Friday, 730 CBS Sports Network. Check it out on KSJS if you need to, uh, or, or obviously the Spartan Radio Network. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I promise I'm going to mess it up again here. But for Nico Parasidea, I hope I got it right. And for Derek Al sitting at his Owl Palace and Clint Eastwood, uh, as well as our AD, Jeff Konya. Ladies and gentlemen, rest in peace, Ray Fossey, and prayers out for the Ray Fossey family. Ladies and gentlemen, San Diego State versus the San Jose State Spartans taking on here this Friday in the homecoming game. Ladies and gentlemen, check us out on, on, on our website, thespiritchasu.com, our, our Twitter, our Facebook, everything you want to find. We'll get articles, and ladies and gentlemen, we got, we got a magazine coming out here soon. Uh, but for again, for Nico and for Derek, my name is Max Miller. This is the Spirit Spartan Football Preview Show, and we'll talk to you guys next week.